Yeah. I know the course. Yeah. <laughs> Gary Cantrell may seem like the most unlikely race director you've ever met. I want to get out here and get some valuable nicotine in my system. But this old, bearded, smoking Tennessean was once an elite ultramarathoner when almost 30 years ago he cooked up the idea for the Barkley Marathons, a sinister, downright impossible race that humiliates the biggest egos in the running world. Everyone should have a chance to really put themselves to the test, but you haven't tested your limit until you try something you can't do. Meaningless suffering without a point. What runners in the Barkley Marathons try to do is run 100 miles through Frozen Head State Park just modest sized hills and they're steep no, I got it. and there's there's a lot of them <laughs> you're going straight up and straight down the course is five 20 mile loops a total climb of more than 60,000 feet and runners have to finish in 60 hours Iso Yucra from Bolivia now hundreds of cocky runners from around the world try to convince Cantrell to let them be one of only 40 people he lets into the Barkley each year. We have runners from 10 different foreign countries. I think every continent is represented this year. Yeah, Western Australia, where it's flat as a pancake. These are the uh, Barkley skins. The entry fee for first timers, just a couple of bucks and their license plate. There are no water stations and not even a map of the route that changes every year until just before the race. You don't know the co exact course. You're out there by yourself all day and all night. If it was after dark, what do you think route finding is like up there in the fog? And a big part of the race is a hunt for checkpoints. Runners have to search for books in the woods to prove they actually ran a full loop. And you see me giving them their numbers, and they get that page out of the book. And then they bring them back. And if they don't have one of their pages, they, their loop doesn't count. And in almost 30 years, only 14 people have ever finished within the time limit. The steepness of the slopes and the trails that we go on, it was painfully brutal. I did not expect what was out there. This is champion runner Jamil Corey's first crack at the Barkley. He made it almost three loops, 60 miles, and that was enough for him. I have a no-quit attitude when I do events, but I was trying to come up with every excuse in the book to stop. They mentally break. You know, 60 hours, no sleep, constant climbing and descending. Then you know where your limit is. It's right there where I quit. That was, that was it. There is one checkpoint runners always know will be part of the race, the Brushy Mountain State Prison, where Martin Luther King's assassin, James Earl Ray, escaped and ran in 1977. They went over this area right here. This wall is approximately 12 to 16 feet in height. Ray only made it a few miles after running for almost three days, which gave Cantrell the idea for the Barkley in the first place. We were laughing at him only making eight and a half miles in 54 hours. And I said, you know, in that length of time, I could have gone 100 miles because I was young and cocky. <laughs> and when the runners come out the other side of this tunnel that goes beneath Brushy Mountain Prison, over here is where they're going to find a book at the spot where James Earl Ray jumped over the stone wall back in 1977. And by the way, the book that they put just outside the prison this year, The Bad Place by Dean Koontz. And this race that mocks James Earl Ray's futility ultimately serves a massive dose of humility. This year, three loops was the best anyone did. After that, everyone had dropped out. That is, except for one man. Still scratching his way through a thorn-covered route late Monday afternoon. Jared Campbell of Salt Lake City pushed ahead all alone as he tunneled, climbed, and tore out some black and white evidence along his final lap. No, I want him to succeed. When someone does finish, you feel like you're elevated just by being there. Campbell kept climbing his way to the finish and finally touched gold. After 57 hours, 50 minutes, and 20 seconds. Oh 
Nice work. Thank you. You feel like you have a little bit of a, a duty to finish <laughs> if, if you're the only one out there on loop four and five. It's kind of interesting, like thinking about everyone here. I, be, I guess I better drag my ass to the finish line. <laughs> I mean, to anyone, it looks like an incredible feat or sounds like an incredible feat, but if you've been out there, you really understand how amazing it is. It's inspiring. Campbell finished with some scars and some luck along the way. And I literally fell head over heels like 25 feet into this thing and I didn't break anything. I like couldn't believe it. It also helped this was his third time running the Barkley. So it was, it was really neat. Kind of know the terrain and know the streams and even though I still got lost. <laughs> All of the people who really know what it takes to do this already know he did it. Thanks a lot, Les. Great job. The respect of your peers in sports is the biggest prize you get. Campbell's finish inspired and demanded the ultimate respect after completing one of the most ridiculous races in the world. I mean, it really is silly, <laughs> but you have to get into that headspace. You have to just make your mind up beforehand. You're just going to go at all costs. The extremes of joy that can come with sports that you only get when failure was probable. In Morgan County, Jim Matheny, WBIR 10 News.